Hi everyone! Uh, in this video, we're going to discuss a concept called returns to scale. And it's a very fundamental concept when it comes to the phenomenon of production. And this theory started uh, way back in the classical economic times with Adam Smith, and it evolved constantly as time went on. So what is returns to scale? So essentially, before we get to that, we, we sometimes have to ask, right? Um, how does output okay, increase over time? So the way that you increase output is essentially okay, you can opt to increase inputs in some manner. And so, for example, we pose the first question, right? Uh, how does output respond to changes in all inputs together? So, for example, picture this. Say you doubled the amount of labor and capital that you use. What would happen to output? So suppose inputs are doubled, would output also double? So say I increased, I doubled the amount of inputs of all inputs I have. How much would in uh, how much would be the increase in the output? Would it be double as well? Would it be more than double or less than double? So, uh, again, the concept of returns to scale has been of interest to economists since the time of Adam Smith and. Smith, okay, in a classical view, which was pioneered by Adam Smith, there are two main factors that come into operation as inputs are doubled. For one, he said that when you start to increase inputs, um, there's going to be greater division and specialization in labor. So say you increase labor by a big proportion and capital by, some propor by a big proportion as well, uh, there's a chance that uh, labor certain labor units will pool so you're gonna have different departments different groups handling very specialized tasks and since labor is able to specialize they can increase their productivity in achieving that part of the production process but at the same time smith noted that you know if you increase your inputs by a lot okay there's there may be a loss in efficiency because management okay, in a firm right we're in a firm setting here management may have a harder time managing the firm given that the firm is now at a larger scale so there's two things to contend with there one is okay your increase in order for you to potentially increase output you could increase the inputs but at the same time if you increase it by a lot there will be loss in efficiency so that's, uh, that's some preliminary concepts on returns to scale. So the returns to scale essentially uh, exhibited by a production function is a record of how output responds to proportionate increases in all inputs. Okay? Note that, that I underlined all there. By, by all we mean, we have to increase all inputs by some proportion. And that proportion is roughly the same so we can find out returns to scale properly. So... Consider we have a, consider a production function is given by this form. So we have a two input production function, which is a function of labor and capital. And say we uh, increase okay, um, the amount of labor and capital, so that's all inputs, by some positive constant, which is greater than one. So say, suppose I want to double it, I multiply both L and K by two. Say I want to double that, okay? And uh, there are three types of returns to scale that's generally common. So the first type, you have constant returns to scale. So constant returns to scale. And that's when if I increase the input, so the proportion of the increase in input okay, is exactly the same as the increase in my output. So for example, say I double labor and capital, it suggests that output will also double. It's so it's in the exact same proportion. Now, there are the other two types. So you have decreasing returns to scale, which means that if you increase, if you double the input, say you double input uh, the inputs, which are labor and capital, the increase in output is not as big as doubling. So maybe it just increases by 1.5, 1.2, and so on. it's not a double. Okay. And then lastly, you have increasing returns to scale, which suggests that the proportion increase in output is greater than the proportion of increase in input. So say you double labor and capital, well, the output would uh, more than double. So maybe times 2.5, times 3, times 4, and so on. So greater than 2 if it's a doubling we're talking about. So again, we have three types, constant, okay, decreasing, and increasing returns to scale. Okay, now... 
we can represent this better through the use of an isoquant, which we discussed earlier. So note, uh, we have isoquants uh, in all three of these graphs. Okay, We have an isoquant for the level of output 100 and 200. And the 200 is in orange. So 100 is here, 100 is here. So initially, if the firm used 100 units of capital and 100 units of labor, they would all be able to produce okay, that 100 uh, units of output. So that level of production of 100. Now, if I double the amount of capital, so that's from 100 to 200, and 100 to 200, under constant returns to scale, the output should double as well. So you see that 100 becomes 200 clearly there. So this is the illustration that it looks like under constant returns to scale. Okay, so it increases since I doubled this, okay, and I also doubled this, the proportion increases also a doubling. Now, it's decreasing returns to scale if, for example, again, I doubled the up, I doubled the amount of labor, so this is doubling, and I also doubled the amount of capital. But notice the increase, okay, the increase in production was only times 1.5. Okay. So it's less than a doubling. So in constant returns to scale, this would have been here. Okay, but if it's decreasing returns to scale, it did the the total output didn't increase by that much. Okay, so uh, there's something missing there. And last, we have increasing returns to scale, which uh, which is here. So again, I doubled the amount of labor, and then I doubled the amount of capital, and you can see that it's already here at Q is equal to two hundred and fifty instead of just two hundred. So the increase was times two point five. So it more than doubled the output. So that's a graphical comparison of constant decreasing and increasing returns to scale. Okay, now there's this concept as well, which we call uh, variable returns to scale. So this is a uh, relatively uh, more new theory uh, compared to the three that we had before. So it's possible for a production function to exhibit okay, returns to scale for some levels of input usage. So at certain levels of input usage, it's possible for it to exhibit some returns to scale, say exhibit constant returns to scale. And for some input usages, it's possible that it increases the returns to scale or decreases the returns to scale for other levels. And uh, the returns to scale, at least in this theory, is some function of, say, growth. Okay, so think about this. When a firm is small, okay, so look at it. When a firm is small, say, Initially, okay, the firm only has um, one unit of labor and one unit of capital. So when a firm is small, okay, increasing labor and capital allows, allows for gains from cooperation between workers, which in turn increases, okay, probably increases the likelihood of specialization from workers and equipment which you can get certain returns from. So because workers now start to specialize and they have the necessary equipment to specialize, and to be to have a higher productivity, there might be increasing returns to scale. And we see that, okay, we see that movement from A to B. So from A to B, notice, okay, I increased by just one unit, okay, so this is a doubling, okay, but the output, okay, more than doubled. From one, it became three. If it just doubled, it would have been two, but it became three. So that movement from A to B. Okay, it suggests that during this period, okay, during this period, there was increasing returns to scale. And it's when a firm is relatively small. Okay, now, as a firm grows, okay, the returns to scale uh, returns are eventually exhausted, i.e. there are likely no more returns to specialization. So the production process tends to move to constant returns to scale. So say I double again uh, the labor from 2 to 4, that's a doubling, and I double capital again, that's from 2 to 4, okay? And we get to point C, okay? So from 3, it became 6. So it's a proportional increase, uh, 3 times 2, it's a doubling, became 6. So the movement, okay, the movement from B to C, okay, that's constant returns to scale. So uh, constant returns to scale. So last, okay, 
if the firm continues to grow, okay, we have another classical assumption. The, the owner, okay, or the firm may have difficulty managing everyone, okay? And as a result, it may suffer from decreasing returns to scale. And that happens, okay? So again, we doubled the output here. So that's a doubling. And we doubled this one as well, okay? The movement from C to D, okay? From six, it just became eight. Uh, if it doubled or exhibited constant returns to scale, this would have been 12, but it's just eight. So this, this is now decreasing returns to scale. So during the entire uh, life cycle of a firm, you can see uh, that it's possible that it displays uh, variable returns to scale. Okay, now a, a big question to ask is how do you determine okay, the returns to scale in a mathematical manner? And it's very similar to how the degree of homogeneity is determined, uh, like in the theory of consumer behavior. And we do that through a property of homogeneity. So uh if a production function okay say we have a two input production function okay is homogeneous okay of degree k in l and k in all inputs in this case then if all inputs are multiplied by a positive constant t where in note that that t should be greater than one okay we have this okay so again what we're gonna do is if we multiply each input by some proportion t, okay, some proportion t, we should come out with um, a function that is separable in that we can take out t from the main function and multiply it by the original, and whatever the exponent of that positive scalar t is, that k there, that's the degree of homogeneity. And that degree of homogeneity will say a lot, okay? And what it says is, if k is equal to 1, okay, then we have constant returns to scale. If k is greater than 1, okay, we have increasing returns to scale. And if k is less than 1, okay, we have decreasing returns to scale. So you can think of k as the increase in the proportion of output because it's beside output here, so it tells something about our output. So k is equal to 1, then likely the proportion of increase in output with the increase in inputs was the same. If it's greater than one, then likely the increase in the in the output was greater than the increase in the inputs when we change it by the same proportion. And if it's less than one, then the increase was less than the increase in the inputs. That's why it's decreasing returns to scale. So in the next video, we're gonna do an actual example involving some production function and we'll get to know this better. And that's uh, the returns to scale concept in production.